Today I'm going to show you how to move stuff around with your mouse in Rive. It requires no coding and it's going to help you unlock a lot of potential. Also, I've just released a new project-based course where you learn how to design this landing page from scratch using Framer, Rive, Figma, and much more. So check out the landing page for yourself at greenthumbeco.com and take the course over at designcourse.com. Let's get started. All right, let's go ahead and get started. I have a new document. Let's hit create artboard here in Rive. And we'll make this a little bit bigger and then change the background. We want a base color of some sort. So if we want to work with within blues, we could choose like a uh, kind of like a desaturated blue color right here. And then we can change the, uh, this is bad color contrast. So I want to change the background of the actual canvas area. Um, and we'll grab that color and then just make it a little bit darker. There we go. So now we're going to hit O for the ellipse tool left click I uh, and shift alt drag out and we'll center this up and then we're going to give the same base color the same exact color for this kind of new morph new morphism effect um, and then we want to come over here to the fills and strokes and add another fill all right now for this fill it's very important for this to work correctly that we don't make it a linear gradient we make it solid all right and then we take that solid and we uh, the one beneath it, we're gonna left click and drag and put it above. So now that new one um, is at the bottom. This is gonna be our highlight color. And then we're gonna feather it. So we click feather, you can see now we have this area that's you know illuminated outside of it. Hit okay by, that, by the way. And then what we wanna do is come over here to the controls for the feathering options and change the, uh, we'll do the Y offset. So we'll make it go up at the top, like right around there. Negative nine will work pretty well. Um, also, the color is way too bright. So I'm gonna change the, the color of that solid and we're gonna make it a little bit lighter, like right around there. Okay, additionally, for this effect to work a lot uh, or work well, we could take the base color that we created the first one and add a feather to it but right there, that's too much feathering, so I wanna change that maybe to say something like four. There we go. Now we do the same process. We're gonna right click over here on top of our highlight, duplicate it, and then this one, it's gonna be a little bit darker. We're gonna come down here, but for, in order for us to see it, we have to come over here to the feathering options and change the Y to negative nine, to, from negative nine to nine. Now we can see it at the bottom right down there so now we have our highlight and we have our shadow now of course you could do other cool stuff we could duplicate with Control d bring this down there we go we have like this weird multi-layered sort of button container you can put the icon in there or whatever you want that's all the design we're going to do for now um, next up the next part of this process and this is no particular order it's not like you have to do this part next but it's a necessary part and we have to add a joystick so hit j on your keyboard and we're gonna left click, actually we're gonna hit J and left click just over the entire section right here. And what this joystick allows us to do is specify a timeline in the X and or the Y axis. And these timelines uh, will be bound to a object here on the canvas that will control this joystick right here. And then we're going to either keyframe those or we could tie it to the mouse position which is what we're going to be doing so when we're going to come back to this in a second but for now we're going to hide it and we're going to hit g on our keyboard and just left click once and this group is just basically an empty group and it's meant for us to be able to control that joystick essentially so if we get this centered up here with our alignment tools um, what we want to do is take our joystick now and change the handle source to the group. So notice this blue outline. So the handle source will now become this group right here. So that means if we bring this back and we move the group itself, you'll see the little dot that's in the center is going to follow it along perfectly. Very cool. So now let's go ahead and hide that. The other thing that we need to add, I'm going to hit um, the R for the rectangle tool, is a hitbox. And the hitbox is just an area... Um, of where we want to start tracking the mouse in order to start moving those shadows around. So, in the highlight. So what we do is get rid of the fill, so we don't have to have a fill, it's a, it's a invisible thing. We're gonna double click over here and change it to hitbox, right there. 
And now we're gonna go back to the Animate tab and we're going to add a timeline. This is gonna be the X timeline. All right, so I double click and change it to X, the name of it. And now we do is just grab our first ellipse and we need to animate only the X feather offset. Don't animate anything else. We'll do that in a bit. Um, so we need to do it for the highlight and the shadow. So let's start with, I guess in this context, we'll start with, it uh, doesn't matter, we can start with either or. Uh, the shadow is at the bottom. So let's start with that one. And we're gonna add a keyframe here at the very beginning of the timeline uh, for the X axis only. And we're gonna do like negative nine, okay? Now that offsets it over here to the left. Now we're also gonna do the same thing for the highlight. The X axis will be positive nine, all right? Then we're gonna come all the way to the end of the timeline and we're going to reverse those. So where it says X negative nine for the shadow, it's gonna be positive nine. And then we grab this up here and this is gonna be, the X is gonna be negative nine. So we basically reversed two properties and watch what happens. So notice how it's, it's doing that as we scrub through this timeline. That's the first step. Now we repeat that with another timeline called Y and we repeat that same process, except now we're animating the Y property. So this is gonna be left at positive nine. This over here is left at negative nine. We come over here to the very end, do the same thing. We go to change this to negative nine, and then up there goes from negative nine to positive nine. Hopefully you understand. So now we have the opposite effect where it's on the Y axis. Very, very cool. Almost done. I know there's a lot of process, there's a lot of steps. I've went through this a bunch just to figure it out and get it committed to muscle memory. Now the last step, the last part of the puzzle here is, or one of the last parts of the puzzle is to add a listener, all right? Because we need to be able to track the mouse. So over here, the target area is the hitbox because that's that's where we want to track the entire mouse. It's going to be within the confines of that hitbox, which happens to be the entire size of the artboard. It doesn't have to be. We can make it smaller if we want. Um, so let's choose hitbox. And then we have to delete this thing right here. But before we do that, we need to change the pointer enter to pointer move. All right. Now we delete this. We add in a line target. All right. Now the target is going to be the group which we probably should have named to something like mover or something like that, but whatever. All right, so now that we have that, there's one final step. We have to grab the joystick and we have to attach the X axis to the X axis, you know, the X timeline to the X axis and then the Y timeline to the Y axis. All right, now if we're lucky, it will work. <laughs> Let's see, there we go. Now it's only affecting the outer circle because that's all we've used. Now look, it, it acts like it's like a little bit weird. It's like, it's reversing it. Like the highlight should be following. Like if you want to, you could change and invert these. So now that I've inverted it, the highlight is following the mouse, which I think makes a little bit more sense. Very, very, very cool stuff here. Um, so now if you wanted to, you could go ahead and do the same thing with the inner element as well. Although we don't really have to because you already know that process. I will show you another thing. It doesn't, you can apply this to anything. So let's say for instance, on the X axis, we want to change the ellipses physical or the, the X position. So let's do that. So at the very beginning, we'll move this here. And at the very end, we'll move this over here. All right, same thing on the Y axis. So we go to the Y timeline. We'll go down here, oopsie, make sure we're at the very beginning. We'll go here and then we'll move this up. All right, so check it out now. Look at that. So the possibilities are really just endless here um, when it comes to creating these really cool interactive type of effects here within Rive. So now you have just one more technique under your tool belt from which you can really create some really interesting type of animations, whether they're tied based on the mouse movement 
or even just keyframing these movements manually if you wish. So as always, make sure to subscribe here on the YouTube if you haven't yet. We're gonna be getting into a lot more Rive going on in the future, and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.